let's make a magnetic bookmark. You're going to go to Canva in a 10 by 10 custom design, and we're going to type in books. Make sure you click on static and free so that you can get an image that you could sell in the future. If you just want to hand it out to family and friends and you have Canva Pro, have at it. But if you want to sell it, you want to make sure that it is a free image. I went ahead and clicked on an image of books with an apple and I typed in teacher. I'm going to make a magnetic bookmark that appeals to educators. I found a font that I liked. I used Tan Songbird, which is part of Canva Pro. I really love this font. It's kind of um, relevant right now. It's a really popular font. I went ahead and grouped it all together, and then I am going to download it as a PNG with a transparent background. Now we're in Cricut Design Space. We're going to upload the image into Cricut Design Space. Go ahead and find it and click Upload. Next, we're going to click on Complex. You always want to click on Complex. Canva made the background transparent for us. They did the work for us. So we're just going to go ahead and click continue and click on the print then cut image. Go ahead and upload it into your canvas. And then once you do that, you are going to center it and then we're going to make an offset for it. The one that they automatically put on is 0.25. I do it at 0.125 and then I'm going to change the offset color to white. Go ahead and highlight both layers and click on group. Once you click on group, we're going to go ahead and make two of these because we're making a magnetic bookmark. So you're going to click duplicate. Once you click on duplicate, kind of line them up and then we're going to click on flip and we're going to flip it vertical. Then we're going to head over to shapes, grab a square, and then we are going to unlock the sizing and we're going to do it at half an inch by one inch. And then we're going to change the color to white so it blends better with our magnetic bookmark. Go ahead and line it up so that the white of the rectangle is touching the offsets. Then we're going to take the rectangle and hit arrange and send to the back. That way you can move the apple up and down to make sure that everything looks symmetrical. Go ahead and highlight all three parts. We're going to click align and we're going to center it horizontally. That's going to make sure it's nice and aligned. Then we're going to gather the square and the two offsets and then we're going to click combine and unite. So it automatically turns white. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. We're going to go ahead and click arrange and click send to back. Now our image is back up front. Go ahead and highlight it once more, and then we're going to click on flatten. That way it is one piece. Go ahead and duplicate this as many times of how many you want to make. I made two of them. So we're going to go ahead and cut. First thing we got to do is send it to the printer. We're going to take off the bleed, and then we're going to click on use system dialog. Once you click on use system dialog and click print, go ahead and minimize your screen and then click on, um, I'm using my Epson 2800 series, so it depends on your printer, but we're going to click on photo glossy paper. Head over to your printer, get your photo glossy paper and make sure it's glossy side up, load it into your printer and go ahead and print your image. I'm using my Cricut Maker for this. I am going to go to Browse All Materials for the cut settings, and I am going to type in the word medium card stock. Um, no, it's not card stock. It's photo paper, but the machine doesn't know it. It's okay. Go ahead and click medium card stock and click done, and we're going to cut this with more pressure. Once it's cut, you want to put some laminate on it. I have some holographic laminate. There's my cut images. And you're going to need a scraper tool and some scissors. Go ahead and measure out the single side laminate so that it, it measures up with those lines inside the sensor and cut it so that it fits. Save any extra laminate you have. Don't worry, these scraps come in handy. Go ahead and pinch the corner off. Go ahead and line it up and then use your scraper tool to push the laminate on top of the magnetic bookmarks. This portion right here helps the bookmarks become water resistant, not waterproof, water resistant. Once you cut it, go ahead and take a look at your gorgeous magnetic bookmarks. I love how these turned out. We're gonna grab some magnets that I got from Amazon and we're gonna flip it over. Go ahead and fold it so that it's symmetrical and in the bookmark shape that it needs to be in. And then we're going to take two magnets. First thing you're going to do is put a little tiny dot of hot glue 
onto one end of your bookmark. Then take your magnet and smush it on there and make sure you press it down and hold it. Um, I didn't do that the first time and it popped back up. So make sure you take your time with this. Move quickly, but take your time if that makes sense. Go ahead and add the other magnet and press down firmly. And then, boom, it's going to click together. And look how cute this is, guys. This thing is awesome. I immediately ran and found a book. I found my Hamilton book, opened it up, and placed the bookmark in. These are so cute. They're so nifty. They make great gifts. Um, they also make great things to sell. So please follow me for more creative ways to sell at craft fairs and more DIY shenanigans. Bye.